Catholic Church. That, that's not something you see every day. That was good fun. But like you said, there was like <laughs> 10 of us walking around. I think there were more police uh, personnel than there was protesters because they, they, they're just so not used to having a church being picketed that they didn't know what to do with it. They're like, well, what are these guys going to do here? So uh, there were so many squad cars. It was hysterical. I think it was like half the town's contingent. And didn't we have some extra company that we weren't expecting? Uh, yeah, we did. Uh, Eric Hovind and his merry band of something or other uh, yeah, showed I, up. I, to... was, that was quite the douchebaggery move. It was, and it was really, I mean, it's kind of what I've come to expect of Eric, but he didn't come, he came to try to provoke a fight. Um, and what I was really glad to see was that for the most part, he was handled uh, by the protesters very well because he was trying to poke the bear as much as he could. Yeah. Uh, and he was really trying to get people to really engage. Uh, I think I think he wanted people to threaten him. He was trying to get things on camera. You know, he brought out Chick-fil-A, um, knowing that, you know, a lot of us have, have boycotted Chick-fil-A. And I don't think he brought out Chick-fil-A to be nice. He brought Chick-fil-A to get video of atheists eating Chick-fil-A. Yeah, I mean, everything uh, is planned. Everything is staged with this guy. And the, the other thing that was really weird, and I've talked about this a little bit on the show uh, several weeks ago, but we were told, well, we, the people in Kentucky were told, that they, they could not put signs in the ground in this location and Eric Hoven showed up and started putting uh, uh, signs in the ground that were all about creationism. And the police wouldn't do anything about it. Yeah, you know, we, we talked to them about it. And they were like, well, as long as they take them out when they leave. So, yeah, But, you know, we were, we were told in advance that we couldn't do that at all. So we, we didn't. We followed the rules. But as, you know, one thing I think about Kentucky is that rules for atheists don't apply uh, the same to Christians. Well, and you could even get a, a, a sympathetic chief or top officer whoever happens to be there with the police department just like i don't i don't want to mess with these guys and i don't want to upset some christians so uh yeah i'm not going to make them take out their little signs but it's, it's one of those things that you know if we show up at one of their events like picketing a church uh, i mean it's a rare exception but it was outside it was you know but if i showed up and stood in the same space if I went into the middle of a, a church service and just kind of randomly stood up along the side or in the main aisle They'd flip their shit. So yeah, Eric really did. He, it, it that you know that analogy actually makes perfect sense because he didn't just come and discuss with us why he was there or ask us why we were there. He came and put on a big show. Right. And I mean, his signs were hilarious. Like you know, would you protest Spider Man? And to one of his friends that were there, I said I would if Spider Man was telling me that gay people shouldn't get married and that he was going to fight to have the law argue in that sense and then another one along those same lines was another fictional character and i said you know you guys have a funny theme here that you want us to you know protest all these fictional characters are you admitting that your god's fictional <laughs> yeah or at least the ark is <laughs> or yeah and uh you know i had one good debate that whole time with those because i i avoided them for the most part i wasn't gonna jump into it but one of eric's friends there was real Jake, I think his name was, was trying to really play off the, oh, I didn't realize what discrimination was happening. And so I ended up having a long conversation with him about it. And really, like, he was roped into a corner where he pretty much had to say, oh, yeah, I agree, that kind of discrimination is wrong. But then he was like, but I don't think they're really doing that. Uh, <laughs> that that's awesome. Classic. Because he had nowhere to go. Because he had... He, I had painted him into that corner of, you know, look, I understand that there could be a tour guide position that works there, that they need you to be knowledgeable about creationism. And so if I went and wor to work there and I said, well, do you believe in creationism? And I said, no, I think it's silly. I would make a terrible tour guide. So well, they have a justification maybe, for not hiring maybe me. Yeah, maybe you'd make I a terrible don't. tour guide. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but do I need to believe in creationism to serve a hot dog? Or to sweep the grounds? I don't. Yeah. It, and, you know, American atheists can't discriminate to hire people based on religion. They could they could have some form of, you know, like, a, like the CEO or David Silverman's job, if David left, you know, they could say, look, a fundamentalist Christian that applied for this job isn't going to be able to do the job correctly. Because in the interview, he said he thinks atheists are horrible people. 
but they can't ask point blank what's your religious beliefs yeah th- th- those they are illeg- illegal questions uh, now of course we were there and the opening day was this huge success and there was lots of traffic oh wait <laughs> were you at a different exit yeah. than I was? <laughs> well, it, it, it was funny. I, I had no idea how close it was to a, an exit, which makes sense from a, a, a business standpoint. And they had uh, all these police cars there, and I think in part to direct traffic because that's what they were doing. But there was hardly any traffic. I mean, it was. I think it was just a normal day. As we were pulling up, uh, the guy that was driving me, Tony, he from uh, Tri State Free Thinkers. We, he pointed out that there was a sign on the side of the road that said, you know, that expect heavy traffic on exit, you know, whatever exit number it was. And he looked at that and he's like, oh, look, they're getting ready for the Ark Encounter. And then when he showed me where the protest was taking place, I was like, wow, this is great. When that traffic lines up, we have such a great line of sight to all of these people and they'll know why we're here. And then we all patiently waited for traffic to really back up. And I think at, at most four or five cars. Yeah, and I think that's just you know your regular flow of traffic. I, exactly. I, I didn't make a meticulous count, but uh, you had to get off this exit and turn right to go to the Ark or turn left to go to somewhere else. I couldn't notice any distinction between the number of cars that turned left versus right. It it really seemed like a non-event. Uh, the, clearly, the parking lot was nowhere close to full, uh, almost comically empty, um, and you know, uh, Tracy Moody uh, went inside and, and took a whole bunch of pictures. Did did you go inside after the event, our protest was over? I did not get to go inside. I was uh, not invited as part of the group that went in for free, and I was not about to drop forty bucks on Kenyans Park. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, now you've continued to follow the story, and and you're one of the people that knows more about the Ark and the Creation Museum than I do, and that takes some doing because I've I've studied this for years. Uh, his attendance on the first day wasn't great. Uh, I'm sure it's improved by then, right? Since then? Not really. Huh. By his own account, uh, they've uh, Ken Ham says they, they've had 6,000 on one Sunday, which is possible. I, I don't, and, but that's Ken Ham's own number, so it's likely lower because everyone rounds up their number. Right. You go to a, sport, you go to a sporting event, they round up their number. You go to a, anything like that, they always round up. It's... You know, either tickets sold versus the amount of people in seats, except or except for the age of the he, earth, he rounds down. Yeah. <laughs> so when he says six thousand, I probably I would think if he's if he's again in the five thousand range, he's probably somewhere between five and six. Um, well, even with his optimistic, we'll just call that uh, optimistic yep. numbers, uh, he's going to be materially below the numbers projected. Uh, the materially below the numbers, I think are needed to make this thing financially viable. Well, yeah, if he's only pulling 5,000 on a weekday, like a Sunday, he cannot be doing well during the week because, Who goes I, okay, Tuesday? look, I live an hour from Disneyland. And there's a reason why I go to Disneyland on a weekday. Right. Because even though that park is still jam-packed on a weekday, it's relatively empty compared to going on a weekend. But it's their weekends that really keep them massive. And you have millions of people going through those gates. Uh, having 5,000 people on a weekend probably means he's... I wanna, I'm going to take a big stab here and say they're under 1,000 during the week. Yeah, we, we, we need to get someone to, to sit by the Ark Encounter entrance and count cars. <laughs> and count. <laughs> it's just, it, you know, I, I was... Um, you know, Hemet Meta from... Uh, friendly atheist him and tracy kind of crunched those numbers and said he would yeah. need something like 5400 people a day yeah yeah that, that, that's the same to, thing that, to, to that hit I those did. gates yeah to, to hit those numbers and and who knows i mean his numbers are all fiction anyway and matter of fact to the best of my knowledge and we've talked about this before when you were on uh, the mathematics of the uh, creation museum doesn't work out and it loses money in and of itself but it's funded by answers in genesis the other you know that the, the church organization that Ken Ham owns and runs. Uh, meanwhile, himself and his family members get 100000 or more per year for fucking around with this fantasy land. Uh, but I think this arc is... I, I'm so excited it got finished because it's going to be a monument to human ignorance for a long time. Yeah, I, it's just... You know, and I, I actually listened to an interview with Tracy Moody recently when she talked about 
almost a feeling of sadness once you kind of walked around the back of the of the arc. Right. Because it was like unfinished. There was this like, you know, like paper flapping against the side of the building. Like it was just they were not ready to open and they had to. Number one, because they had given that opening date and he knew we would be right on top of that. But yep. number two, at this point, they had to have been losing money on building this thing. So they had to get people in that gate. And with the small numbers they're getting, it's, I don't know, I would not want to be Ken Ham right now, I can tell you that. Now, He's now, got to be Didn't sluggish. the local mayor have something to say about the business and, and all the people going to their downtown? Yes. Uh, so, yeah, the mayor was talking about how it really wasn't the financial uh, boon they had expected. They, you know, they were really promised a lot. Um, you know, hotels are going to come into town, uh, rest chain restaurants like Chili's and TGI Fridays, which don't exist in Williamstown. They're just not there. This place has nothing. So they're told hotels are coming all. So they poured all this money, all these resources into making this park happen. And they're not seeing anything. And the problem is, is that the people are, that are visiting generally are coming into Cincinnati for other events. And they're like, Oh, you know what? If they're interested in that kind of thing, they're a you know, 25, 40 minute drive away. They'll go down and see it. But then they leave Williamstown and go back to Cincinnati. Yeah, I wouldn't even know. I don't even know where Williamstown is because, I mean, we got off the ramp. It's so close to the highway. You get off the ramp, you see the arc. When you leave, you get back on the damn ramp. Exactly. That's, that's, that was my, and I, from what I understand, there's not much more than that. They're a, they're a town of a few thousand people. They're not. I mean, this is a this is a small town that doesn't have anything. What I, I found fascinating is the gas station that we had to go to to use the restroom because the uh, the uh, porta potty company refused to drop off toilets. Uh, I went over there and there was like five or six people in this gas station working. <laughs> <laughs> and in, I mean, this is a gas station, like you said, near off the interstate, near near nowhere. And you would think maybe one or two people might be in there, and there's you know four or five. And I tried to chat them up about business, and they did not seem very happy. <laughs> I, I think <laughs> they were expecting some kind of traffic. Uh, I think their biggest bitch was that uh, the damned atheists were coming in there to pee. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's uh, the Porter Party Company, which one of one of the two companies did uh, uh, give us an official apology and actually cut their contractor uh, contract with the company that refused to deliver with us. Uh, I like it. I like it. So, so we've got this uh, boat that won't float, made out of concrete and steel and rebar, elevators, I beams, and a giant lake next to it for in case there's a fire. <laughs> and uh, virtually no one's going. It was promised to be a, a kind of a Disneyland of Kentucky, and uh, like you were talking about crowds before it, this ain't no Disneyland. <laughs> no. <laughs> the other thing that I, I always wondered when when this thing went live. Is there that local fundamentalist family that said, hey, you know what? Let's go to the Creation Museum. Oh, you know what? No, instead of the Creation Museum, let's go to the Ark. You know, you're cannibalizing your own business model. Yeah, that's a really good point because he's kind of – that return business has to be very local. And now he's just going to split it between two. And I think – I think at one point you're just going to end up losing both. Well, and I think you know, from a business model, if if he had built the ark next to mm-hmm. the Creation Museum, I think that, that that's a wise business choice. I mean, uh, as wise a choice as one can make building a fucking boat <laughs> of, of concrete. But if it was there, then you could say, well, you know what? You can get pass for this place or this place. Or you could get a double pass and you can make a whole day or a weekend of it. But these things are like, what, 30, 40 miles apart? Yeah, uh, from what I understand, I'm, I'm not great with the Kentucky geography, but they're a, a pretty decent uh, distance apart. Yeah, it's and a, it's, it's not a, one of those things where you go on a weekend vacation and necessarily want to hit both. You're only going to hit one. Yeah, you're and, only going to hit one. And, and now, of course, uh, I, I don't know, I, 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 you must have seen uh, Ken Ham's new rant that uh, atheism is the religion of death. Yes, coming from the group of people that can't wait to die to have the everlasting life, we're the religion of death. <laughs> I, I, uh, I've I actually gotten a couple times now, Ken Ham has responded to some of my tweets. Uh, to my knowledge, I haven't been blocked yet, so that's my goal. <laughs> um, but uh, 
Yeah, he he went and uh, I guess on his own blog said that uh, atheism is all about death, not Christianity.